Sports. Hey, welcome to another episode of Stuff About Sports. Today, uh, we got Ty in the building. We got Bert in the building. We got Corey in the building. And I am Germ. Gentlemen, good evening. What's good? What's up? What's up? So today, we're going to go around the world of sports. We're going to, in the NFL, we're going to talk about the Washington racial slurs, uh, Dan Snyder. Um, things are changing on that landscape and the possibility of the name changing this year and the pressure on the uh, team from Washington and the fans' perspective. Uh, we will also touch on Cam Newton uh, fitting into the Patriot way. If his idea was to prove to everybody that he's not a head case, he's off to a horrible start by the way he showed up to Foxborough, uh, dressed like the Hamburglar. Uh, in the world of the NBA, we will talk about the trouble that the NBA bubble is going through. Um, what teams does it help? What teams does it hurt? And the threat of COVID completely shutting down the NBA. And then we will briefly try to come up with a top five out of 22 teams left in the NBA. And in the world of baseball, uh, we're going to list our top five starting pitchers heading into the shortened season. And then we will talk about Mike Trout and his mom. And is Mike Trout a person who should be speaking on behalf of players, considering that none of the players seem to like him and he's not marketable, and um, his mom should shut up. And could a bad team in the 60-game format win the World Series, and how would that look for Major League Baseball? But uh, first, of course, the warm-up. We don't have sound effects yet. Gentlemen, the uh, WNBA plans to wear jerseys with names of women uh, who have been affected by police uh, brutality, who've been killed. Um, they're they're going to start with Black Lives Matter, like with in the NBA, painting it on the court. Uh, they're calling it the Say Her Name. Uh, the the trick here is that they're only going to do the women, which I think is great. Um, starting with Breonna Taylor. So, uh, gentlemen, do you like this move? Oh, you know what? I guess Corey's probably been frozen this whole time. <laughs> yeah, I, thought he, he, I, I just thought he was in. Yeah, he was studying notes. Yeah, you know, I thought I was, he was just like so nonchalant. Like I'm just don't give a fuck. I'm just gonna <laughs> be on my phone the whole time, and he's yeah. really just frozen. So I'm sure he'll come yeah, back no, I'll, soon. I'll jump in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, look, I yeah. Look, just like last week when we spoke about you know um, the the NBA uh, doing it and painting the courts and and wearing um, you know names on their back. I still think it's a good move. I think it's a great thing for the BLM movement too, because it obviously gets more intersectionally with focusing on female victims, which we know has been huge in the news and wanting to, of course, um, highlight them just as much as their male counterparts who unfortunately um, were going through things too. So look, you can't go wrong, honestly. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course you can't, you definitely can't go wrong that I'm, I'm on the same, I'm on the same boat. I, I don't know how anybody could try to, say anything bad about bringing recognition to something bad that's happening in the world. I mean, it's, it's very similar to, you know, Black Lives Matter. People are, oh, all lives matter. Like, well, okay, we, we understand. Just like, you know, there's, there's probably going to be women that aren't going to be named. There's probably going to be like, oh, but why, what about the guys that, you know, got, you know, been, been messed up or whatever? Like, we can, there's, there's always victims everywhere, but, you know, we can only do, you know, do cover by so much at a time. And being women, they, they're focusing on what they feel like is their biggest, you know, their biggest cause, just like I'm, you know, speaking up for black lives, not just as an ally to black lives, but because I'm black and I can't help but to just be like, I want to help my own people right now. I get everybody else is having issues, but I want to help my own people first. So I'm all for it, of course. Yeah, um, especially with the WNBA, uh, the idea of coming from a woman that the NBA kind of stole and they're kind of fumbling that because there's an approved list. And I'm kind of disappointed that the NBA didn't allow them the freedom that the WNBA is giving the women. I love that they're only focusing on the women victims. It's the WNBA. It's the way it should be. Um, you know, outside of of um, uh, uh, I lost my train of thought here. Oh, outside of, of just just everything that's going on, like Ty was saying, uh, the women are banding together and it'll get other women to band with them. And hopefully like the Maya Moore situation, if Maya Moore was a man, everything that she sacrificed would have been a bigger story. So the fact that women are taking like if women just did everybody, it wouldn't be a, as big a story because the NBA is doing it. This is something that 
they're doing that's unique and that's strong and that is powerful. Corey, you are back with us. Uh, I am, and I, I agree with everything you guys are saying. I was there. You guys just, I guess, couldn't see me, so I had to log okay. out and log in. But yeah, o- awareness is key here, and if they're supporting something that they strongly relate to, then it only powers the movement a little more further, and that's all I add to that because you guys hit it all on the head. Yeah, unity is great. I mean, especially like as long as it's not unity and hate. So I don't mind if 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 black people, white people, women midgets whoever or i'm sorry little people that's not the right phrase nowadays but you know i don't as long as you're doing it out of love and you're trying to do something positive uh, more power to them so shout out shout out to the WNBA and its players um now that you're back corey i know i'm gonna i'm gonna touch on a subject that's a little bit sensitive to you guys tanaka gets hit in the head with a line drive by Juan carlos stanton which is irony at its finest because i'm pretty sure stanton has a huge dent in his head from when he got hit uh, uh, was that last year or the year before? I can't remember exactly when it was. Baseball's so long, it's like one giant loop of time. Um, <laughs> one is, are you, are, you, are you more fearful of the players getting COVID or getting hurt trying to just get ready for this, like, waste of a season? Or would you rather get COVID or take a line drive shot in the head from Juan Carlos Stanton? COVID, man, you got to go with COVID on this one. It, from the way everything sounds is COVID is a two-week recovery period. You test negative, you you come back, and that's it. I mean, a line drive to Stanton, depending on how bad it is, and that sounded terrible for anybody that saw it. I mean, you, that's that's more than a two-week recovery. So that's all yeah. I have on that. Yeah, if, I, if, I, if, the, if the question is, you know, line drive or, or COVID, is definitely COVID. I think I've prepared, you know, my immune system well enough to to fight that. But a line drive, it don't it don't matter. You, you can hit you in the, in the tempo, and you're and you're done. You're done skis <laughs> on a throat or something. Like, no, nah, I'm yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, th- no, you have to take COVID 100. percent No one wants a line drive to the face or a fractured skull or be bleeding out of your ears or anything like that. Um, so it, in this case, it's the lesser of two evils. I think the question is: it, Would you rather have? a left hook from Mike Tyson or a line drive to the head? I think that's a trickier question. Like Mike Tyson right now. All right. So when I went to the school of hard knocks, I've learned that when you hit people with objects, you do with a, with a golf club instead of a baseball bat because the golf club has a smaller point of contact so that the, the pain is more direct, which is supposed to be more painful. So I would rather take the punch because the glove is covering more of my head, which means – it's the pain is spread out instead of just one spot from a baseball. Look so. at Jamal. Look at Jamal using science. I'm, I'm proud of you, bro. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is, I mean, you can't argue that. Like, literally, nobody can argue that. Like, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Mathematically. <laughs> All right. So now, oh, okay. My second part question to that is, in, in, in all seriousness, you know, this is probably something we're going to see more of, right? Like, we're going to expect to see some sloppy baseball guys not – I mean, I would assume if he went through full spring training and stuff like that. I know that line drives happen. I don't remember the last time it happened in training camp. Like, mm-hmm. you know, his reaction time, you know, all that stuff could be affected. A lot of guys, you know, do you guys foresee a lot of these types of uh, injuries happening? Not, not so much the line drive. I think that's more of like a freak – and you, your reaction time has a lot to play with it, but you're throwing 90 miles per hour. The ball's coming off the bat close to 200 miles an hour. I mean, that thing is, is especially from someone like Stan, and it's screaming. So that was more of a freak uh, incident. I'm more worried about, like, hamstrings and quads and ankles and, and the common injuries from not training. Yeah, I was going to say the same exact thing, you know, like the, the just – being out of shape a little bit and that kind of stuff. I, I, I guess a reaction time could be thrown off, but you would, you was, I mean, who knows, man, who, who knows if, if you're coming in, you should not come in on any play or, or anything with like a half-assed kind of mindset because shit like this can happen. Right. Like, so you, you know, it might've just been, he still mentally wasn't warmed up and he's like, Oh shit, that <laughs> you should have, should be more aware, but uh, hopefully this shit like this, shit like this doesn't happen anymore. 
Yeah, no, I mean, I uh, I agree with that. You're going to see players kind of try to rush and get back into mid-season shape in a shorter amount of time. And, you know, a lot of them may have just been sitting at home, you know, who knows, with some limited training, but not like this, which is, I think, what we're seeing to happen. So um, I think you'll see more injuries like this than, than COVID on the table, to be honest with you. The Major League Baseball has set up some really interesting rules even in game play if too many players handle handle the same ball they have to throw that ball out and use a new ball to try to stop the spread that way too so um i think we'll see more more of these types of injuries than any type of real risk of covid spreading to be honest with you yeah so it, it'll be interesting to see i think i think you're right i just kind of like for me it's like man you don't really see that in camp that often i don't know it just seems like a weird mesh of things. Mike is, is on social saying, yeah, get hit with a line drive, go to the hospital and catch COVID at the hospital. So I guess that could happen too. <laughs> Yo, that'd, that'd be worse, right? <laughs> that'd be worse. That'd be, <laughs> hope. that'd be so bad. That'd be worse. Oh, man. Um, well, if, if if somebody was to get hurt on, on, on the field of play and then go to the hospital and get COVID, uh, the one person who doesn't have to worry about it is Patrick Money Mahomes. We could just call him Money Mahomes from now on, right? Like, uh, oh, signed yeah. a I, you know, like a, a gajillion dollar 10 year deal, um, which is an extension. It's not even a signed deal. So it's a 12 year thing. You know, he can make up to five hundred million dollars in that 10 years. A half a um, billion, half a billion dollars. That's I mean, and it's jarring because we've seen contracts like this, but not in football. You know what I mean? With like baseball. That's like this is like baseball money. This is like, you know, top level NBA money. Like it's insane. Uh, that they they are doing this now, and he's so young. Uh, is is this an insane like contract? Like, because this changes the game for forever. No, this is not insane. This is going to be the new norm. But I'll preface that by saying for players like Mahomes, and there's only one other person that you can give a contract like that to. And he, in my opinion, he still has two years to prove himself, and that's Lamar Jackson. Any other player in the NFL is not getting a contract like this. But you have one of the youngest quarterbacks to win a Super Bowl with, with remind you, in the postseason, he came, including the Super Bowl, he came from behind every single time. If it's one person that deserves that money and can guarantee that the Chiefs get a return, it's Patrick Mahomes. Exactly. Exactly. No, I mean, I, I, I agree. I mean, I, I, honestly, I didn't really break down the numbers. I don't know. I just know that it was it was 10 years, 500, right? It's kind of like what I'm hearing. That's a lot of money, but it's like he's the best. He's the best. <laughs> he's the, he is the greatest in the league right now, like in terms of just playing and, and combined with upsize, upside. He won a Super Bowl for one, so you literally can't – like you no longer can – you can't say, oh, he's young and unproven. The dog, he won the – he did everything you asked of him. He won the big game. And even outside of that, people were still calling him – the, the best young quarterback in the league because of how talented he was. Like he's like a Rogers. Like no matter what you do in his season, you're gonna blame the team. It's not gonna be Rogers' fault. And it's, it's never been Mahomes' fault. Like he's been balling. He deserves whatever amount it, it, it is. I don't know. I don't care what it is. He deserves it. So that, that's all I can say about it. And keep in mind, he wasn't at a hundred percent last year. He was playing injured for most of that season because he took a week or two off for a knee injury, and you know he was still playing injured. Sorry, Bert. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I mean, look, there's no, there's obviously no argument he needs to get paid. This is a monster contract, a 10 year extension. The Chiefs are mortgaging their future on one individual to stay healthy. And mind you, I think I read 140 of it is guaranteed. If he goes down next year with a season ending injury, the Chiefs are still paying him that $140 million. He's. And I think I read this too. He's tripled the previous record for largest contract. No one has seen a contract like this. So the Chiefs had a lot of faith. He's got to stay healthy. He gets, he deserves to be paid, but this is insane to me. It's absolutely insane. And it's only going to help the next skilled position player like a Lamar Jackson when he goes to renegotiate his contract. Because if he plays just as good or better, he's going to be able to ask for bigger bucks. So if anybody else in that position is getting ready to negotiate their contract and they're playing well, they are licking their chops knowing the potential that they can drain out of whatever organization they're playing with. So look, I hope it works out. I like Patrick Mahomes, but talk to me in two years and see if this was still a good decision by the Chiefs. It is. I'm telling you, it will be. Ty, you were going to jump in there? No, I was saying, first of all, I don't believe Lamar Jackson can live up to that. Like, you, you, like unless he literally wins the Super Bowl – Okay, but I just think that's gonna be that's a tough task to ask of him. He doesn't have the team 
and the coach that that Mahomes does. So you know, I don't think Lamar's gonna be able to live up to a, a, a stature of of uh of Mahomes and he seems like he's like the Peyton Manning he's like he's the best in the league right now man so I think there's is he he deserves that and, me, and people might not be able to hit that but another thing is is well, that's what I was going to say is sometimes better they sign quarterbacks early because it's, it's going to be have to pay him more later you no matter what you're going to pay him so what if he ends up winning another Super Bowl now you really got to pay him something crazy to keep him because you can't lose him so you know Time. sometimes there's benefit in signing early it's and, and oh, good, not to good, jump good. in, Jer, but mm-hmm. I was just going to say the craziest part that everybody, it's not so much the money, it's just the time. It's 10 years. If if he lives up to it, they're signing extension after extension for him. So guys like Eli Manning and Brady, they make close to 300 to $400 million over the course of their career. So it's it's the money isn't so much crazy as the time that he locked in for. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, if me and Ty – definitely are related the same genes the same thought process not only is it insane Bert I'm going to make it even more insane I could make the argument that they didn't pay him enough (laughs) 10 think about this in 10 years the cap from 2014 to 2020 for the you know for the guys who went to Pemberton public school that's six years from (laughs) from this year okay the cap went up $65 million in six years, okay? By the time, and I'm, a, I'm sure this is going to be a situation, if he remains healthy, they'll revisit this and there'll be some changes to it. But we'll, we'll work off the assumption that this is what it is. He, the, the $45 million on average he would make per year is probably going to be normal in another six years. So to Ty and, and, and to Corey's point, like, yeah, pay him now. It's not a huge end. I mean, the guarantees, and I think Bert is only partially right. I think that guarantee is combined. I don't even think it's like a one-year guarantee. So his guaranteed money at signing, Carson Wentz, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, and Matt Ryan are still making more than he is off of one-year guarantees. So the contract is actually great for Kansas City. Obviously, um, it depends on his health. But I – like – he changed the game and his contract sounds great now, but there's a lot of incentives to hit that half a billy. There's obviously health. And then there's obviously just like, we've seen it time and time again, quarterbacks just hit the wall, man. Like they'll, they'll be great for five, six years and then they'll be done. You know, we've seen it. So um, he could have gotten more, I think. And, and I don't think that's going to happen to Patrick Mahomes. He's an outlier. And I agree with Ty I don't think Lamar Jackson like it'd be strange to have two guys like all-time all galaxy type players uh within the same couple years of Brady and Manning though I was gonna say you had it with Brady and Manning yeah you had Manning you had uh, had, you had Brady you had you had Brady you had Brady being the greatest system quarterback for a long time and then you had Peyton Manning you know losing in the playoffs every year but I, I get I get what you're saying it's okay all right, so the NBA is thinking of doing a loser bubble tournament. Uh, only 22 teams are making the, the regular season. Uh, does the loser bubble with the rest of the teams, there's 32 teams, so that's 10 teams for the Pemberton education people. Um, uh, do they – does that make sense to do a bubble team to in, yeah. in a loser bubble team? Right? No, yeah. right? Okay. Who wants to watch is there an incentive? a loser is there, bracket? It, like, I don't – well, it doesn't matter think, the incentive. Listen, it, it, it doesn't even matter the incentive for the players. It, there's, it doesn't matter if they're paying these players another million dollars each. No one's watching loser bracket tournament. Who's no. watching that? The fans, when, dog, the, the fans. Are you kidding me? If I was, a, if the Sixers were not in a in a main in playoff spot or in a loser bracket, I'm watching the losers. I'm watching the Sixers. I don't care. But for what though? It's just just it's to watch. Mean, it's like I've drove. I've driven to Philly and watched practice, bro. I've driven and watched practice in Philly. <laughs> watch right, my you're players a die practice. Hard, you're a diehard. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to him. He's a diehard man. Um, I, <laughs> you just spring training, point- haven't you? Yeah, but that's different. That's like you still have hope in spring training. Like, dog, like if I if my team gets booted from the playoffs, I'm like they're losers, man. Go go play Good golf point. or something. I don't want to see you. Good point. Uh, I think the I think the logical reasoning for doing this is some of the um, 
not as good teams don't know what they have in terms of rosters. So they would want to get more right. tape of some of their young. They, they're still at run, they're still at regular I, 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 season I, I, that we didn't finish. Right. So I, I get like, but they're basic. We're basically just we're playing a few games to figure out the last seedings and they don't really care about the loser teams. But the point of the loser bubble would be one to get some of the bottom feeding teams to sort out the uh, lottery. Right. That That's one reason. Um, I think they should just give everybody that's at the bottom the same amount of chances and just be done with it for this year. But that's one reason to kind of keep the lottery and the draft integrity. Um, and then two, teams just want to scout their young players and just want to know what they have. And it's kind of hard to do when you're playing against each other because obviously everybody, you know, there's always that guy who does excellent in practice and then he shits the bed when the game, when it's game time. So the only way to really assess how people play in games is to play in games. So uh, I, I do understand it. I don't think they should do it though. I do understand the logic of it, but especially in this time, uh, this really the risk is not worth the reward. So they should definitely skip that. And uh, uh, that'll be the end of the warm up because I will lump Deshaun Jackson because that's a long, a semi long conversation. Uh, Deshaun Jackson fucked up. I mean, there's only there's no other way to to, to say it. Uh, no. excuse excuse my uh, Russian. He fucked up. Okay, he tried to make a point of of basically supporting the Black Lives Matter movement by using uh, an example from probably one of the biggest racists, the biggest bigots, the a dictator, a legit dictator uh, to prove uh, his point in support of Black Lives Matter. Um, I will read a couple of these anti and for the for the, if you're there's any kids listening, there's some anti-Semitic quotes following. Um, if you are, uh, uh, if you are one of the, I will say the soft-hearted people. I won't say what you, you should be passing up. Read a goddamn quote, man. <laughs> Yo, don't be mad at your boy. Hey, no, Deshaun man, Jackson not, messed it up for us, I'm man. Not gonna say, I'm not going to say anything. He messed it up for us. Um, I, I will read his apology first. He did say, "I never wanted to put any race down or any people down. I apologize. I didn't intend to harm or uh, or spread any hatred towards any group of people." Um, basically, he was reading a quote saying. Uh, because those white Jews know that Negroes are the real children of Israel and to keep uh, America secret, the Jews will blackmail America. They will extort America. Their plan for world domination won't work if the Negroes know who they are. The white citizens of America will be terrified to know that all this time they have been mistreating and discriminating and lynching the children of Israel. Uh, he was he was quoting a book. Um, I had the title of the book here. Um, but it, it, it's a book of just straight anti-Semiticism. It's, it's, I think the book was called Jerusalem. He also quoted uh, Louis Farrakhan, who's also an anti-Semite. Uh, it's, it's bad. It looks bad. And it's like it set us, it set the movement back. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on uh, Deshaun Jackson's fumble? I, I don't think it set the movement back, but he, he definitely has some people in the Philadelphia area, if not in America, mad at him for that. He, he was trying to uplift the movement, but... Dog, you don't, you don't. I I hate to laugh, but you don't quote Hitler when you're trying trying to get a point across. You just don't do it. So he he tried to mean well, but he definitely. I mean, man, pick up a different book that doesn't have a Hitler quote in it if you're gonna try to to do some motivational quotes. But that's all I got. No, yeah, that's good. that's very very well said, Corey, and I I I agree with that. I can't really say when I I can't really say much. But I'm, I'm gonna say a little bit, and uh, yeah, it's it. He should have. He could have worded. He could have made up his point better. I, I definitely don't think he pushed the movement back. I think it's it's definitely. I mean, on the outside looking in, he, he could have right. Like people were upset about it and and whatnot. But hopefully, I think it could push the movement forward if more black people actually learn their history. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Hopefully, people will actually go and learn their history. Yeah, look, I, I don't know if he pushed it back or forward. I, I don't. I really don't think it makes a difference either way. Um, I, I don't think he did harm. I also don't think he did a lot of good because I think those that may be familiar just realize that he messed up. He should have researched something. And again, he was trying to use his platform and his following to do good. I understand that. But to Corey's point, there are many other people you can quote. If you have to quote Adolf Hitler, it's probably a bad idea. It, 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 just leave it at that. So, um, so I I'm do we do we think? Apology. Oh, sorry, Bert. Sorry. 
I was going to say, I'm glad he came out with an apology. I know the Eagles talked to him too. Um, and I know he came out and said he didn't mean any, any harm. And I, I truly believe that, but man, I went on Twitter after this broke and there are people calling for his head. There are people calling for him to get cut. There are people calling for him to get banned from the NFL. And in my eyes, I just think those people may be just as ignorant as he's as he was in that moment. If you can't clearly see like this wasn't his intention and that even right. then, We've had other players in the league say far worse things with worse intent. Cough, cough, Riley Cooper. About to say, Riley, Riley Cooper yeah. got a goddamn five-year extension, I heard, after his after yeah. he's talking about so, beating up and a, and a second And a second yeah. job. So yeah. It, it, yeah. that was my point. You know, a lot of I had a lot of the, uh, I'll, I'll air quote, some friends, you know, it, it's just the age-old playbook, right? Like there's something going on that involves black people and something that we're trying to, to fight here. And one black person messes up or says something that goes against the grain. They're like, hey, look, see that guy? See, see, you know, we knew we were right the whole time. And it's like, okay, well, all right. So we're going to do this game. That's fine. You're demanding me to denounce Deshaun Jackson, but you didn't have the same energy for Riley Cooper at all. You know what I mean? You just kind of said, oh, he was drunk. He was at the thing. That's my point. Selective outrage, right? I can say, hey, listen, Deshaun Jackson. And I'm not even going to say that he was wrong about what he was trying to say. I think it was one of those things. He doesn't seem like the scholarly type. I hate to put down another black man. I just think it was one of those things that he came across on Instagram or social media or somewhere. Some, you know, you know the, the dark way. He's like, oh, look. And he saw that it was uplifting black people, not realizing who said it, where it was really from, the story behind it. And he just retweeted it, posted it, whatever. It happens all the time. Right? Ice, Ice Cube's yeah. been saying similar things on his Twitter recently, if you if you don't know about it. He's been getting a lot of backlash, too, saying that he's anti-Semitic. And, yeah, some of the things they're saying, is, it sounds that way. And, I, I, you know, I don't know. Well, I mean, you can and, – and it's okay to use – it's okay to use – there are – you can find a little bit of good in things that aren't – that are pretty awful. And, and vice versa. They're like, not everything is truly good. Not everything is truly evil. You can find nuggets of, like, you know, because of Hitler, we have Volkswagen, right? Like, Volkswagen's a good car. Like, you know, you can give that to Hitler, right? So, uh, you know, for real, dead serious. He he he's responsible for Volkswagen being a car company. And, I don't know. Just, uh, huh? <laughs> way, I mean, it's not, the way it's, you said it. I've been cracking up. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, it's, not like right. the, you said. it's not like a world altering, like, but it's 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 an example that a lot of people would get. But anyway, so you know, it'd be one thing if he would have said, "Hey, uh, find out why Hitler said that," like, you know, or where that where that came from, and exploit that. No, you can't just be quoting Hitler, like, you know what I mean? Like, it, right. yes, it does say in some in some biblical references that 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 black people um, or people, it says in the Bible. You know, God's children were the color of bronze. Like it just says that. You know, and people like to ignore it and all these just other just things. Do the, just do your history, man. I mean, shit. just do the history. Do your Google's, people, and Deshaun Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Do your Google's and and get well, better. Jeremy, I'll do you one better because you made a good point, saying like, yeah, you know, this, the, you know, people are. There's a movement going on, so people are watching now. And the second, you know, a, a black man tries to do good and uplift the movement, but makes a mistake, everybody's like, yo, see, this is why, and like they get all over him. But even if you take the case of Drew Brees, Drew Brees spoke his mind was quickly educated on that fact, came out and realized it, made an apology almost immediately. Um, and then everybody is just like, okay, no, he understands. Now he made a mistake. So you're going to have Absolutely. to do that in this case too. You, you can't play um, just one side of this thing. So well that, and that's, well, that's the biggest issue because when Drew Brees had his thing, and I actually had that in my notes, there was backlash, but it wasn't call for your, like we're, we're in this society where like if you mess up, you they want you to permanently lose your job and never work for and do anything ever again and they were quick to do it to deshaun jackson they didn't they and, 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 and yeah, nobody black, said cut drew Brees out there. nobody said cut drew Brees. Yeah, even yeah. even black people said drew Brees, pay attention to what you're saying we didn't call for his job we didn't say uh well i made the kkk stuff but that was kind of for jokes you know what i mean but i call for the team to revolt i call for the black players to revolt well like, they say should, fuck uh, you no i'm a, no longer like fuck you breeze and and we, you throw me the ball, I'll catch it, but fuck you. <laughs> like you know, Michael Thomas. Michael think... Thomas should catch the ball and drop it in the end, like just right before he hits the end. <laughs> no, he needs he needs his stats, but don't be like <laughs> fuck you, Breeze. Like you know. Well, uh, I mean, we could say we could make that argument about uh, the the Cowboys black players. You know, Jerry Jones likes to talk about everything. It's it's oddly peculiar how silent he's being through all this. 
You know, he, he was the one that said, none of my players, you will stand, boy. You will not kneel for this flag. If I was a black Dallas Cowboys player and Demarcus Lawrence and, and Stephen A. Smith actually kind of hinted at this on first take and Demarcus Lawrence jumped up to defend uh, uh, Jerry Jones. And I was like, well, fuck you, Demarcus Lawrence. Like, your he's, boss. He's probably, still getting, he's probably still getting a check, right? But yeah, you know, he's still <laughs> I, And I get the I your check. But, but, like, my man, your boss is clearly Jerry Jones. All right. Reckless speculation. <laughs> This is the thoughts of what I'm about to say is germ, not Let's network, say not it, stuff bro. about court. Come on. Jerry Jones is a racist, bro. <laughs> he is a he is a full fledged Texas racist. Why are you quiet, Jerry Jones? You schedule your own press conferences as an owner post game after every game. All we hear all every year, all we hear you is talk, 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 talk. You want to talk to everybody. You want to tell Roger Goodell how to do his job. You want to tell other GMs and coaches how to do their jobs. You want to tell the players what to do. Speak up. Say something. All right, but you got Dak Prescott, Demarcus Lawrence. You know what you guys do? You stay on the porch, keep eating your bananas. We don't want to hear from you. Don't defend Jerry Jones. All right, fuck you, Demarcus Lawrence. You know you are you are a house slave. All right, you don't get to have an opinion. You don't get to talk to Stephen A. Smith like that. You don't get to do anything. And I hope he sees this too. Tweet me. He will. Cool. Good. Now, moving on to another racist, <laughs> Dan Snyder. <laughs> Dan Snyder. <laughs> Uh, there's some trouble racist. brewing. There's some trouble brewing in Washington right now. The pressure is on. FedEx, uh, the company who owns the rights to the stadium, said, "Yo, change the name. Pepsi, change the name. All these other uh, entities that fund the Washington team says change the name." Uh, three minority owners now are saying, "Yo, we're selling our stock. We're out of here." Uh, to me. That doesn't happen unless behind the scenes, Dan Snyder is kicking and screaming, saying, I don't want to change the name. And, so, and the owners are saying, well, fine, we're out of here then. We don't want to deal with this anymore. Um, what are your guys' thoughts of Washington? Um, there, there's conflicting reports saying that the name will be changed before the start of the season. I don't see any evidence of that. But uh, what are your thoughts on the whole situation uh, involving Washington? Well, I, if I'm not – mistaken and one of you will correct me please correct me but i think it all started fedex was one of the first to speak up now keep in mind fedex is still a minority shareholder of the team even though they sponsor um the the stadium they're still uh the president of fedex or the owner of fedex is a, just a minority shareholder i don't think he's got any major investment in the team but nike pulled all apparel from the redskins <laughs> from their site. So they basically, I think it was foreshadowing is they're hitting their bottom line, especially now. You can't sell tickets right now. So what? Can you, where can you make your money? And that's apparel. What's the biggest brand company that sells NFL apparel? That's Nike. So as soon as Washington heard that they were pulling all of their apparel from their website, you couldn't get anywhere. So that leaves you what? To go to Models if they even have them down there and uh, at the actual stadium itself to sell their stuff. So. I think that they hit them where it hurts. So I want to say after they looked at what could be catastrophic to their bottom line this year, they said, oh, shit, let's get the ball moving. And amongst everything else, with the different movements we have right now, kind of keeping, I'll say, keeping with the times and doing this now um, as more people hopefully start to embrace some sort of change. Now, I, I got to be honest with you guys, I haven't read anything about how the fans feel about this. But I know how we all feel about this. So, I mean, I hope it does happen before September. <laughs> yeah, people, you know, people are, are, are upset. And people are like, <laughs> people are like, they're upset. I mean, in general, people are upset about the cancel culture. Like, in general, people are like just taking in arms, like, oh, just trying to rewrite history and trying to change this. And blah. like, people just are upset with change. And it's, uh, it, it just, it, it just smells like racism because it's like, Hey, do you not notice that the shit was racist back then? Like, can, you don't. Why don't you want to just make it better? Like, why are you? Why do you want to hold on to this racist, this racist foundation so so strongly and passionately? You must not like other groups of people besides your own people. So it's uh, yeah, no people. I'm, we're seeing it. People are upset about it. People are upset about them changing the name and, and like yeah. I, was, I just seen a post recently like, oh, you're gonna change that, then change all the you know what about. The, the Buccaneers, they're they they they're they rape and pillage people, and they they're stealing things, right? And the and the yeah. Vikings, they were savages, and and they and they went down a list of all these different teams of how you can really make a case. The Yankees, they're like, oh, the Yankees, that's 
that was that's anti self like or, or whatever like i don't know but people are, are getting you know trying to trying to pull out of context and it's like you know it's, it's, let's talk about the redskins like it's, it's, we're talking about one thing right now the goddamn red the topic is the redskins how can you try to defend that name move on right like redskins is it's just it, it's not even nothing about it is 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 uh I, you can't be proud about that name. Like, come on, man. It's not humane at all. Redskins. Like, right. how are we even, how is this a discussion? So, yeah, the name needs to change. Hopefully, it cha- I, I hope it changes sooner rather than later. I think we all, I think I, I always said it has to change at some point. I wasn't, I'm not surprised it's changing. I'm surprised it's happening now. But I thought, like, in a couple of years, they would finally, like, something would happen. I don't know what I thought, but I knew it would change eventually. And I thought maybe, you know, three, three, four, five years. It's surprising it's happening now. And I'm, I'm happy and I'm glad. Because it's it's you know a long time coming. Yeah, and this has been a topic that's been brought up, uh, you know, a little bit at least for the last couple of years. So it's not completely new. Um, go ahead, Bert. Yeah, look, um, we all know Dan Snyder is a huge piece of shit, uh, and the reason we know that is because this topic has been brought up several times, and several times he's gone on record and stated boldly, "I am never going to change the name." As many times as it's come up, and here's what's happening now all thanks to the Black Lives Matter movement and everybody wanting everything to be completely equal for everyone is it's being revisited and it rightfully should be revisited. But granted, uh, you know, money talks and granted FedEx uh, has a minority share and Pepsi may have a minority share. Their control is little, but their company name is attached to a football team with a racist name. So Regardless of the stake they have, they're taking a stand to ultimately, you know, protect their own values as a company and protect their bottom line as a company. Because if they stayed in and supported, people would stop using FedEx. People would stop drinking Pepsi. You know, Nike was smart and they pulled right away because they knew people weren't going to shop them regardless. And they're making a stand. Plus, they stand with Colin Kaepernick and have for a while. So what the Redskins did, and Jerm, you hit it right on the head, this whole, is it happening, is it not happening, a company's making a public stand for pulling out, wouldn't be happening unless Dan Snyder is acting like a child saying, I'm still never gonna change the name, even though he should. So I think the Redskins are doing damage control. They're saying, yes, we're heavily looking into a name change because they're trying to save some type of face and they're trying not to let everything blow up underneath them, but they haven't firmly announced when or what the options are. If they are completely smart about it, they'd put it out to the fans for a vote. They'd give them four choices on what it could be, keep the color scheme the same, and then let your fans vote on what you want the team name to be. Of course, you're going to have those asshole outliers are going to be like, "I yeah, I want the Redskins." No, that's not going to happen. Give them like you know, look, Twenty Four Media's markup of the Warriors, crispy. Like they should honestly just take that and use that completely. It still fits the color scheme, fits the trends, fit everything. But let, you know, don't take it. Said, don't take market. it. Pay pay make, for it. Oh no no yeah yeah. Okay. You can't oh, have it. No, you don't take it. Yeah, no yeah, no yeah, free yeah. rides. But yeah, so yeah. look, I I think it is going to happen. And if they are smart, it'll happen before the season. If there's, I mean, chances are they're stupid, so they'll be like, oh, we'll do it next year. But um, I mean, honestly, going back to what I started with, money talks. So if you see more and more companies rally behind or more offer to pull out, you know, if they start losing serious money from their investors, they're going to change it. The hand is going to be forced. Either that or Dan Snyder is going to be literally left out of D.C. The, the only thing that's going to stop this from happening this year is logistics, right? Like, I don't it's, know. It's not what a lot the, of time. It's not a lot of time to do it. And I don't know what, like, the merch rules are. I don't know what the NFL, lo- like, I don't know the TV deal. Like, they have to send all that stuff out for new graphics to all the networks that are showing the I team. I think what we I said like, last week was the best thing. Like, just for if you, if, it's, if you can't make a new logo and all that stuff quickly, just announce it. Washington. Anou- yeah. Joe, yeah. Just say, yeah, announce it and say we're Washington. Announce it, yeah. And say Take the logo Washington. off everything. We're Washington yep. this year. Next year we'll have a name, same colors for Washington. <laughs> and I, I think I think the people aren't really like the logo isn't that offensive. Like there's Indian logo or Native American logos in all three sports. I think it's the name, right? Of all the four majors, I just did a quick Google search, and you don't even have to Google it. Hey guys, guess how many uh, other team names are literally a racial slur? Just one, right? Indians. It's, Indians. Well, the, okay, so that's that's like a political correctness term. It's not. Okay. Yeah, it's so not a derogat. Yeah. It's not a derogatory. You know, Indians. Though, like so Indians to me, though, I'm not saying it's derogatory, but 
it bothers me a little bit. Like I, I try no, no, best not to say okay. What I'm saying but is Cleveland, the word Cleveland did put in though. Cleveland put in for a revisit. They Cleveland made a statement that they're going to revisit their team name, uh, the Indians, and kind of with focus groups and see what they can come up with. Unless no it's going to be unless it's going to be about anything, unless it's going to be about the country of India or some kind of representation of India, you should be called the Indians. Like you're, you're, you're representing Native Americans, and they're not Indians. I, I got you, but what I'm saying is th they're kind of like opposite Washington, right? The issue with Cleveland's team was the logo. It was a legit caricature of an Indian. It was like back in those old school cartoons where the Asian people had like the super two big teeth and the slanted eyes, and the black people had like were black and had super oval lips. Like like Chief Wahoo was that, and it was it's been sold for a long time. And then the Indians took him off of everything, right? It's kind of like the opposite. Like the, the logo for Washington isn't really the offensive part. Like the term redskin was a, is a legit derogatory term coined by the settlers. <laughs> like that was it. That's not, it's not Indian. Indian's just like a political, it's like midget, right? It's like not a derogatory term. It's just a politically incorrect term. Like, you know, the, you call them whatever you call them. So for me, um, I, I know I know a lot of the uh, officials for Washington want to keep the red part. Like they want to, whatever the name's going to be, they want to do red because there is a popular DMV uh, area hashtag HTTR uh, hail uh, hail to the Redskins or whatever. It's like whatever their thing that the fans made up. Um, you know, they want to kind of keep that that promotional thing going. Whatever ha uh, you know, you know what Haskins likes, right? He likes the red tails. I do too. The, I love yeah. the red tails, yo. Like it, that's too black for for. As, I was about to say that. They're not going down. They're not going. they not going from one from, said from that. derogatory to like promoting black people. They're not going to yeah. that extreme. And, and it's never. And people. And I mean, I, it actually fits. It just. It just not the. It's not going to happen. But um, I don't I mind. Like, but I don't mind the aviator. You can kind of do it and be like the. I saw the red hawks, which is another. Thing you know, I think that'd be pretty dope. But whatever, whatever they decide to do, it's it's going to be infinitely better than the Redskins, right? They could be the Washington Pickles for all I care. For real, it's, and it's, it's better. It, it's better. So whatever they decide, um, it's not. It doesn't have to be a huge rebrand. The the colors, the the jerseys, all of it's iconic. It's just your your damn name. Like change that shit. So or be the Washington Skins, man. I don't care what you call yourself. Like whatever, you know, just. But you know, but you know what that's short for. You know what that's short for. So no matter what, it's yeah, like yeah, uh, pigskin because they play football. No. Uh, so <laughs> uh, so we're gonna finish up with football. Uh, Cam Newton shows up to Foxborough dressed as the Hamburglar. Um, he's goofy. <laughs> he's always been goofy. Uh, he's gonna continue to be goofy. Um, his hair still looks like like a, a, a tree a tree without leaves on it. Uh, he just looks, he just he presents himself like a doof. Uh, can Cam Newton conform to the Patriot way? We've seen players, personality players like Albert Hainsworth, Ocho Cinco. You know, um, Reggie Wayne wasn't even a real big personality, even though he's kind of a trash talker. He didn't even make it through training camp in New England. You know, he, re he, re he retired. He said he'd rather retire. Um, there are players uh, that said they'd rather win one Super Bowl and have fun. Uh, I believe it was uh, which one? Which one of the Long brothers did not play? Which that was Chris Long that played for the Patriots. So Kyle Long, uh, he played with the Eagles. Yeah, he said uh, I'd rather win. I had so much fun playing with the Eagles. I'd rather win one Super Bowl in my 12 year career and have fun than win six with New England and not have any fun because he said he knows a bunch of New England players that don't have any fun there. It's all business. So. Knowing how Cam Newton is, do you think Cam is gonna fit in New England? Uh, I don't think that's. See, I don't think that's gonna be a huge topic. Like Cam is is has never been challenged in North Carolina. He was never challenged in Carolina, so I think he's got something to prove. And yeah, he might dress different than Tom Brady dresses or his in his social media. Um, presence is going to be a little bit different, but as long as he stays out of trouble and, you know, learns the playbook and does his job, I don't think there's anything that Belichick or Kraft have to worry about. I think they're going to let him express himself, but as long as can, he conducts himself professionally. I mean, he has been a little crazy on social media lately, but he's amped up. I, and I'm telling you right now, we can come back and play it come September. He's walking away with the starting job in New England. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, 
Yeah. So, so I mean, for for one, Corey, you you made a statement. You said something in terms of Cam getting in trouble. Cam has never been in trouble, like actual trouble, right? Right. Yeah, no, yeah. never. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, they'll, they'll, like not not legally, but he like it exactly. was an incident. It was the incident where I don't think he meant like trouble, trouble. I think he meant like uh, the state, uh, the incident last year, the year before, where he basically told the female reporter she can't ask him football questions because she's a girl. And, yeah, that, like, that's, PR, like that. that's P, Yeah, that's PR trouble. Definitely. He, he just has he has he has he has like sprinkles of that throughout his career, like the but not a lot of it though, and you know, not, like, no, no, not, nothing, nothing that I would say he's like. All he has yeah, is what Jamal's yeah. saying. Like he's goofy. Like that's what you have for him. Like yeah, yeah I get. I, we, we all see that. He's, yeah, putting he's, his he's head down. Him. He like he'll he'll put the towel over his head when his team's losing and he'll pout and things like like stuff that you don't. A really lot of players. Yeah, from 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 the, from the starting quarterback, you don't you don't want to necessarily see that. But you see a lot of quarterbacks that you know you know seen Brady yelling at coaches, right? Like you've seen a lot of you've seen a lot of things from from quarterbacks. Regardless, and, and even you look at other sports, like you know, people call Paul Jordan a crybaby, the crybaby, LeBron's a crybaby. But in reality, no, they're fucking winners. They're just so passionate that they can't help but to wear their emotions on their sleeve. So I can't, I don't like to down people for that. You need to control so that Cam's, better. So Cam's emotion is, oh, my team's losing. I'm not gonna get fired up and fire my guys up. I want them to see me put a towel over my has head. He has he not? Has he not? He hasn't not tried to fire his guys up. Oh no, he he has those moments where he's like down he's when down they're in winning. The game and, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm not trying to be, be a defender or anything. I'm just saying yeah. I don't like to, um, you know, bash people for being emotional. Like he doesn't. Everybody handles their emotions on a different in a different way. And he probably you're absolutely right. He should not carry yourself that way. Well, you seen a one uh, gif where you know the, the college player is walking down with his head down, and the other player runs up and puts his head up, and he's like, "Yo, pick your head up." Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you should operate on that level. But you know, people are emotional, and it's like, man, I'm. I'm upset. My head's down. But either way, in terms of the Patriots and Cam, I, I mean, for one, he's goofy. But once I went, I made a point about Gronk last week. Gronk still was able to be Gronk. Other people are able, able to be themselves. Ocho Cinco, Ocho, Ocho Cinco, and Albert Hainsworth are horrible examples because both of those guys are notoriously lazy. Chad Chad Ocho Cinco was was not setting his playbook, is what I heard. And and just want to go out there and just run fast and catch balls. Like, nah, dog. There's a system here. You got to learn your routes. And he's just like, just throw me the ball. I'm open. Like doing whatever he wants to do. And Albert Hainsworth got that monster contract and then never gave a fuck anymore. So we we know whose players were. It's it's not. I think a lot of I've heard a lot of from listening to the sideline story podcast on the on Give It a Shot Network. But listening to that podcast and hearing these other players talk about the Patriots. They they have a respect. They they have a certain respect. Some players know they don't want to go there, and, and like you said, it's all business. But they fucking win. Some people are about that. Some people want that. Some people are like, yeah, let, let me let's be about that business because I've been for the player coach, and we're not winning shit because these players are fucking not give the, the backups don't give a fuck. The, 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 these guys don't give a fuck. Like some players want that. So there's teams for everybody, and there's there's psychologies and and cultures for everybody. But I think at this point in Cam's career, and anybody. That is that is that similar to Cam. Like you have all this talent, it's been untapped to a certain certain point. You haven't won much. I think he 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 should want to just give in. Like like Belichick, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. Like just show me how to win. He should be he should be open minded to all that. And you know who cares about how his hair looks? Who cares about how he what font he uses in his Instagram post? If he goes in there and 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 focuses and 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 gets coached the right way. The sky's the limit, and I do. You know, I think they'll be fine. I think they don't have another other enough enough other enough other pieces. But I think Cam will be there next year, and I think the Patriots will be uh, back on our dynasty mode starting next year. Yeah, look, I, you you made some great points um, about Cam. I mean, like, who who cares if he's goofy? Who cares what he dresses like? He's gonna have to uh, give into the Patriot way if he wants the starting job, um, and he wants to prove himself. He's going a little nuts right now because he's hungry, man. He's pumped up. He just signed with one of the best franchises in the NFL, so he's raring to go. Here's here's what I'll say, though. You, you brought up Gronk, too, which I thought was an, an excellent point because Gronk was the goofiest of goofs, man. He was just a <laughs> frat boy that never left the frat, dude. They would win. He would go out and party. He would drink till like 4 a.m., you know, but he still reported when he needed to report. He still played when he needed to play. He was able to flip that switch. Cam's problem is when he sulks a lot, he turns into a bitter child. When anybody from the Patriots starts to lose, they collect themselves with poise. They answer the questions, but they know that they still have, you know, tomorrow's a new day, a new game. We're going to get to it. I think what may get Cam in trouble 
despite his goofiness, if they're if they're winning and they're going off, they're going to let Cam be Cam. Cam's going to have his fun. Cam's going to dress wild like he always does. He's going to make his snarky remarks. If they lose and Cam continues to be a petulant child and not answer questions for reporters or sulk or just take the focus off of the team onto him and make a bigger press thing than it needs to be because Cam's acting like a baby, I think that's when the Pats will have more of an issue with it. Because the Pats will let anybody go out and party, have fun, but the second you start to be bitter when you lose and you lose that overall like Pats were about business demeanor, then that's when things will go south. Yeah, Bert, you just hit it right on the head. You know who cares? I know Ty's like, who cares? The fans will care if they're, if they're not winning and he's doing all this stuff because that's how it goes, right? You are allowed to do whatever you want to do as long as the team is winning. The moment you start losing, they will nitpick at everything you do. And Cam has a lot of kindling for that fire, right? Yeah. And and it, and, and, it, and it's, it's Boston, man, and we don't have to really get into it, but you know mm-hmm. how that is. Like, it's mm. gonna be it's gonna be quick and, How many, and has, has, has there been any black quarterbacks? In- Jacoby Brissett, but he played. Oh yeah, yeah, he, was a he played three games and he won them. And he was a he backup, just, just like they, just like they would want their black quarterbacks to be. <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't know. I mean, it's it's I I, I just don't see it working. I, and I get that it's for a year. I mean, if they win, will they extend him? I, I you know hashtag don't sleep on Stidham. They like this guy. They were comfortable enough with him to roll. I don't think they were saying in their heads, we'll sign Cam late in the offseason because nobody's going to sign him. You know, they their plan was to go with Jared Stidham. You know what I mean? And I think they were confident in, in, in Brian Hoyer, and they were they were probably going to play the let out of training camp. Like, whoever gets cut, they'll bring in a third string guy, and they were going to roll with Jared Stidham and see what they had. And, um, you know, Cam, is a, we talked about this on the previous show, he's, he's no risk, uh, you know, high reward, right? Uh, but – or that's what they say, but well, no, it's, that's facts. Ten, it's it's low, very low risk. You paid them nothing. <laughs> you paid them nothing. Well, this is why Buffalo is still going to win the division. This is why I have no fear. Cam played ten years in the league. Just take a wild guess how many winning seasons there were. Go ahead. Don't worry about it. I got the answer. Three <laughs> grand total of three winning seasons for Cameron and that one magical twenty fifteen year. And I don't know about you guys. But as we age, as time goes up, our bodies don't get better, right? This ain't 2015, buddy. All right, Brady, I don't care how many Instagram. Brady, talk to Brady, Brady bro. I was gonna say Brady's about to raise on a line. Brady too, was he awful to last year, bro. He was awful last year. Enough, enough of you guys. You know, we'll yeah. I, we'll you know, let's let before we move on. Let's talk about this Cam Newton lifting weights in a gym. You know, then they got Antonio Brown running routes in a field with nobody guarding him, and everybody's like, "Ooh, look at Antonio Brown. He's sharp." Well, what'd you think he was going to do? Drop the fucking ball? Like, of course he's going to catch it, man. Like, he's going to say that because you were, you know, when Tio was trying to get a job, when Tio was trying to get a job, you were the one mm-hmm. posting all the Tio videos. Like, look how Tio's ready. Look how he's Tio is up here. Tio is up here. Okay. Cameron and Antonio Brown are all. No, hold on. If Antonio Brown played consistently forever, he's very, he's fucking talented, bro. He's not that far off of Tio. When when Tio is losing, you know what happened? Tio broke his leg, came back six weeks early, and had the best stats in the Super Bowl. That's what Tio did. If that was Cameron Newton, Cam Newton quit on his team. And then he was like, I'm not coming to training camp. I'm going to get my surgery at the last possible minute because I don't want to play with you guys. Ron Rivera needed a quarterback in Washington. And he traded for Kyle Allen instead of taking Cam Newton. Nobody, your old coach doesn't even want you. Get out of here, Cam Newton. Just shut up and cut your hair. All right, so uh, moving on to the NBA. Uh, Adam Silver came out with the statement that COVID could wreck the bubble. Uh, he shouldn't have said that, right? Like, don't, like, you put in all this effort and time and, and, and resources into restarting the NBA. Your very first statement should be, well, if too many people get COVID, we're going to shut it down. Uh, that's that's a mistake. So uh, will you guys count this NBA season? And do you think COVID will indeed shut it down? I, I don't think COVID will shut it down. I think that was so stupid of him to say, like, you don't need to say what's in the back of all of our minds. I think there's nobody in this country currently that doesn't think COVID can ruin anything at any moment they're already talking about with all the states surging rolling back different things and reclosing some things that had opened so it's on the forefront every day when you turn on the fucking tv so no one needs to come out with a statement like that um 
But if it does shut down and, and the season is just a, a whatever, then no, I'm not counting the season for anything. Nothing happened. To me, it was just like there were some NBA games. So there were some teams that were ranked. But you know all that means nothing until the playoffs when a team catches a fire. And, and that's that. You know, that, that's the, the stories we, were, we romanticize about. Yeah, no, if there's no, if there's no, if the season doesn't end, then yeah, the season's throwing away. <laughs> like, the season, yeah. throw the whole season away if we can't play the playoffs. Like, in any, in any freaking uh, league, if we can't play the playoffs, what, what's the point? Like, yeah, we had a, a long regular, a long regular season, but I mean, I really hope I, that's like horrible to think about, like a season just being over and not finishing it. Like, it's hard, horrible to think about. Man, I, I, I couldn't, I, I guess. If there is more surge in cases in NBA players, they have no choice, right? Like, if there's a bunch of NBA players that are in the bubble, they get it. Like, you have nobody to play, right? I, I doubt that's going to happen. I doubt that's going to happen. I feel like, uh, you know, the this, this spike's happening now. We're, we're getting more of a spike. There's there's more testing and, and whatnot. You, you got to just, you got to move forward, you know? Like, I, I doubt they're going to get a bunch of guys. You, you got to do your best to distance hand sanitize, switch out the balls, whatever you got to do. And, um, and also be in the bubble. Right? You, you're there with your family. You guys should all be kind of in quarantine. Well, the families aren't, the families aren't allowed to come. That was oh, the okay. Thing. So okay. it's like, they're but there. Either way, like you're there though. And they're, they're, they're putting the right amount of time where it's like, you're here for two weeks. Right. And they're they're or whatever. So by the time you're playing, you're tested, you should definitely, everybody should be clear. Um, if you, if you do it the right way. So, yeah, no, you got to play. And if it doesn't play, of course, that this season is, is just thrown away, man. You don't want that to happen. You can't let all those games just keep thrown away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, Adam Silver's dumb for saying anything like that because, like Corey said, dude, everybody's thinking about it. Just shut the fuck up and move on. But um, to the same point, too, the, the league and the teams and the players have to keep themselves in check. They have to make sure, like, like look, don't fuck this up for everybody. Behave yourself. Wash your hands be good don't do anything stupid because if you know one person gets it and spreads it then season's over and if the season's shut down then sorry no season you know no asterisks no no anything it is what it is you let it lie and then you start fresh in a new season who knows when that'll be maybe this year coming up or maybe the following year yeah i mean for me the success the success of the nba and like the nba bubble is honestly just going to depend on the security of it right like like how much, how many things are you letting in, right? Having a certain amount of balls dedicated to gameplay and making sure whoever's in charge of sanitizing them. And like, I don't know if they're going to go as extreme as like changing them every time out, which, you know, I'm sure they'll wipe it down, you know, but some of these rules, it's like, you know, they're going to be playing five on five basketball, but like when you're on the resort, you can't play like doubles ping pong. Like it's, it's like shit like that. It's, it's, I, I get that you're trying to limit it, but um, I'm kind of on the side, like, like, all right, we're already in the bubble. People are washing their hands. We're limiting the amount of people coming in. Like, you don't need to, like, cancel doubles ping pong. Like, if they're either going to get it or they're not going to get it. The key is not to let, you know, you're testing vigorously every week. You know who has it and who doesn't have it. Stop letting people inside the damn bubble. Like, you know, have your have your guys in there and stop changing things. And Adam Silver, you know, if people stay in the resort, you probably shouldn't – you're not probably not going to have that problem. And honestly, if you do see a spike and you know that your security's top notch, then you might as well just open up everything anyway. Because all the precautions you just took, you might as well just send them back home and let them travel and play in their own arenas and and just be done with it. Because there, if if COVID's going to infest that, there ain't nothing any of us are going to are going to do about it. Well, so. there, there's a bunch of people that wasn't there NBA players that got tested before that said they were asymptomatic. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Nikolai Jokic went home to wherever he's from and tested positive, but and he it, was asymptomatic. No, yeah, he's like, now no, he's I felt negative. nothing. Yeah, he didn't feel anything. And then he was actually trying to come back to join his team for camp uh, yesterday, and he missed his flight, and everybody thought he tested positive again, but he, he just missed the flight. So. I, I'm, just, I'm just getting at it's like if, if – for, I mean, for, for one, it, it seems like obviously that's, it's affecting people that have weak, and weak immune systems. Athletes generally, it shouldn't affect as much, and they might get a call for or whatever. Or but some, a lot of them, it seems like there's no, there's asymptomatic. You got it. You went all away, of, whatever. All of, yeah, right. all of the players that tested positive, like Donovan Mitchell, you know, I think was probably the worst one, you know, and, and Rudy Gobert. And there's actually, there's like real life beef between them. I don't know. If uh, yeah, but I don't think, that yeah, base. but that's what I'm saying. They, they were playing games. They weren't sick. No, they no weren't what I'm like, saying is, what I'm saying is recently, like, he, he, like, or not recently, but they said, like, now that they've recovered, all they had was like a slight fever and loss of taste. But other than that, they felt perfect. Like Don Mitchell said, I was still working out. 
That's you know, what I'm saying. Yeah, so, right. like, if, if somebody's tested positive, keep them in a bubble. At that point, assume that everybody got it and just fucking keep playing until yeah. you have a, until you have a, 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 a episode where you're like, oh, I'm sick. I can't play. OK, go lay the fuck down. But yeah. if I feel fine, who cares if I'm positive or not? I feel fine. Let's play fucking ball. <laughs> like, yeah, because you would do what? that, and, and and that's and that's part of the sensationalism of it, right? Like, if you yeah. had any other, if you had any, sickness, like, oh, right? you got COVID, Rather, shut it all down. Right, right. Like, if if you had any respiratory infection, or even not, like, if you had any virus, or a, like, if you had diarrhea, like, it doesn't matter what you have. You know, if you're not physically able to do something, you're just not going to do it. Like, how many of us have gone to work with the flu? How many of us have gone to work with, you know? like super bad allergies, you know, that, you know, not yeah, the flu, you know, the flu game, you know. the flu game. We had the well, flu game. Well, the hangover. Food poisoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Food food poison. Poison. I got you. Okay. Yeah. The, the mafia food poisoning pizza. But people, but people have played with the flu though, regardless. Right. But I, I, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, it doesn't have to be like respiratory or anything. And like it's migraine, like whatever. It's just like, if it's not debilitating you, you know, you're going to play. So the yeah, moment, patch up that BP, honestly, patch up that BP. And if Lawrence you're able to play, Lawrence you're able to play, play. And if you're tested for positive, we're all in a bubble. You can't leave, so don't don't spread it. We're all we're, we're spread it here. We're gonna spread it here. It all is, is what it is. We kiss each other. We we, cut, we cough on each other. It is what it is. Hopefully, we don't die. Cross your fingers. Um, so I, I know I know uh, Corey and Bert aren't the super big NBA guys. So I don't mind if you guys don't have a top five NBA list. But tie off the top of your head. Uh, do you have a, a, a top five teams that that are left that, that maybe your favorites to win? The uh, NBA, yeah, yeah, um, mm-hmm. definitely Sixers. They're yes. young, they're young, they're fresh. I'm, I'm I'm rooting for the young and fresh, in talent, and then the Lakers, and then I got to go. I just have to. I mean, I, I always. I mean, honestly, it really, is it's the Lakers. Honestly, number one. But mm-hmm. I'm a Sixers mm-hmm. fan, so I got to be real. And and the Lakers. And then I'm gonna say the the other LA team, the Clippers. Mm. I, I I can't count out Kawhi. He's just the that real guy's... the real the real LA team. You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. Building we'll... building that <laughs> building that thing from the ground up, not we'll, relying we'll on see. magic. The dust of it. Don't matter what Johnson. you want to call it. It don't matter what you want to call it. LeBron and AD are nasty. Like AD is is nasty, and and you can't take that away from him. Like. Those two are, I mean, yeah, you can make a case for, for PG and, and Paul George and Kawhi, but AD is 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 legit, and you know that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's those three, and then I, and then I got to go Giannis with the Bucks, um, mm-hmm. and what will be five? Man, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the Rockets. Maybe the Rockets. All thanks to Russell Westbrook. Corey, do you have a list? <laughs> I do, I do. I went um, Lakers number one because you you just can't you can't count out and with an amazing record before everybody shut down. Um, let's see. After the Lakers, uh, I do like Milwaukee. Um, Ty, don't hurt me, but I don't have the Sixers on on my top five. Then I have the Clippers. Then I go to the Rockets, and then the last one. My body hurts, but I I pick Boston. I think Boston, don't forget, Boston was what, ranked number four or five before all this happened? Yeah. Like, how do you count them out? Yeah, for sure. Bert, you have a list? No, not not one that I really care about. It's just stuff that I researched and just mm-hmm. really me picking favorites so I had something to talk about. So it was really, right, I mean, I had the Bucks, mm-hmm. I had the Bucks, um, then the Clippers, and then the Lakers. Um, I have Houston and then uh, Toronto. Beautiful, beautiful. So yeah, my list is pretty much similar. The best teams have been the best teams pretty much all year. So um, I do have the Lakers at number one, and and then I do. Um, but LeBron's have, on the team. They can't. Is his boy is there? Yeah, his boy is there. <laughs> I I understand that LeBron's on the team, but he's not the best player on the Lakers. That's Anthony Davis, and Anthony Davis has been the best player on the Lakers all year. And he's anybody who says different, mm-hmm. anybody who says different uh, is is doesn't know basketball the Clippers I have at number two I do have Milwaukee at number three I have Boston at number four and I do have Toronto who has been one of the best teams all year at five and will they be allowed to come is is, is Canada allowed to come at 5A, the Philadelphia 76ers. At 5A? <laughs> yeah it doesn't count but anyways <laughs> 5B we have the Houston Rockets all right I'm done. but what I was saying was <laughs> one more 5C the Denver Nuggets, sneaky good 
all Bro. year. But will Canada yeah. be allowed? I think we might. We, they might not be allowed here into America. No, there are, the players are here already. Here. Oh. Yeah, yeah, they're good to go. They're now nah, that yeah, like when you're an NBA team, you kind of get those special privileges, just like the hockey teams. Like they they pick the three hub cities, yeah. and the American teams are going. So I think one of them is in Canada, right? Like it's, I think. I think. Yeah. So uh, the American teams will be whoever's chosen will be going there. But um, t- so I do think that the bubble or this bubble scenario and everything, the COVID era of basketball has helped the Sixers more than any other team in the NBA simply because the Sixers were beat up. They we got, Yeah, we got Simmons back. They got Simmons back fully healthy. We we keep changing the damn roster. You know, they keep adding guys. So these guys have been working out together. They have the talent to do it. And I don't think – I think the Sixers – Elton Brand hasn't constructed a good regular season team. I think they he has constructed a playoff team. And I don't really care about playoff seeding because the playoffs are totally different than the regular season. So even though it's been disappointing where, like, the road loss and the home record has been, like – like they have the best home record. They're like 24 and two at home. And then they're like 17 and 30 on the road, which is like insane. doesn't make sense. Um, you know, so I think the Sixers are a sneaky dark horse pick. And of course I'm a Sixers fan. So I'm supposed to say that, but I hope we get the Celtics in the first round so we can get those Boston clowns out of here. All right. So now moving to baseball, uh, let's see, what do we want to do first? You guys want to do top five pitchers first, or do you guys want to do Mike Trout? Let's do top five pitchers because we can yeah, Our, we can run through that and then get on your boy. So yeah, yeah. Thank you. Go ahead, Corey. Kick us off. Top five pitchers heading into the twenty twenty season. Oh man, I said that. Now I got to Okay. So what's crazy about my top five pitchers is most of them are in their thirties, but you can't deny their skill, especially now that we've, uh, you know, we're far from spring training and we want some veterans. So Mike would love me because honestly, I, I'm fighting over the one and two. Um, but I had to put I had to put DeGrom as number one for my yeah. top five as much as it kills me. I have Cole as my number two, but going back and forth between those guys, like DeGrom was the shit last year. And to be honest, Cole pitched his heart out, but I you know, you don't know how he's gonna do for the Yankees. It, it's just all a crap shoot. Then I put uh Verlander on there because Verlander's still Verlander, Scherzer, uh, and then Strasburg. So they're all veterans that know how to pitch. I'm not, you know, I'm not flipping any coins on any young guys that might catch fire right now, especially because we are so far removed from spring training. I don't know what any of these guys are doing. So if I had to pick a stop, like if that had to be my top five starting lineup, that would be it, hands down. Yeah, I feel like um, I had to find out a fourth and I just had to Google and I feel like it's the same one because Cole was the one I guess I was missing. But I'm definitely going to Grom. I mean, in reality, it would be the Grom, the Grom, the Grom, the Grom, the Grom. Like, <laughs> if I really had to pick the five and I had a gun in my head, that really would, would it would be like the Grom, the Grom, the Grom, the Grom, the Grom. But, <laughs> but for the sake of, we got to send some other people in there. I got to put Scherzer next. The Grom, Scherzer, Verlander, Strasburg, and then I left Cole. I had to look. I had to look Cole up. That I guess yeah. he's he's a, he's a Yankee that I've been kind of neglecting. Um, I guess different order, but that that's the, that's my order. So um, my top two are pitchers from New York, but I went I went the other way. I went Garrett Cole number one. I went to Grom number two. There's no denying that. My third is Max Scherzer because he still throws darts um, and did so, especially in the you know in the playoffs last year for winning the World Series. My fourth and fifth, I have an old faithful and I have an, an up and comer. Um, my fourth is is Clayton Kershaw out of LA because um, he gets a bad rap for falling apart in the playoffs. But you got to remember, you know that one year in the playoffs when they were battling Houston is when they were stealing signs and just hitting the ball everywhere. Um, and my my fifth, um, Jack Flaherty of uh, the Cards. I mean, he was one of the biggest reasons as to why the Cardinals made that great run towards the tail end of the last season and ended up in first place. He went seven and two. Uh, with a 0.91 ERA, so he was throwing out there. I left Verlander off my top five, despite knowing that he is definitely a top five pitcher going into this year because of my pure hatred for the Houston Astros and that entire organization. Because you know damn well all the players knew what was going on, including the pitching staff. And Verlander knew just to get that ring, and he's married to Kate Upton, and she is too good for him, so he's not in my top five. (laughs) It's funny. I, I did. I did the list when I was doing this. 
I thought it would be more variety, but I mean, honestly, there's only five or six guys that you could probably rank and it didn't really matter. Um, you know, Kershaw was considered, but I knocked him off for Steven Strasburg. Um, you know, he struck it last year. He struck out 250 something batters in like 200 mm-hmm. innings. Like it's insane. And he's had like eight Tommy John surgeries. And that's, <laughs> like, I, like, what are you doing here? So, you know, um, you know, I put him in there. Uh, uh, Verlander, I put in there. He's 37. He had 300 strikeouts. Uh, and he, didn't he win the Cy Young Award last year or something like that? Like at 37, something, something ridiculous. Um, uh, of course, Degrom. I mean, what are you, what are you talking about? He had. Woody had a crazy ERA last year, right? Like two, or the year before. What year is that? I can't two years ago, he had a crazy ERA. Yeah, it was like two eighteen. It was like something nuts, and then he was still in the high like one eighties, one you know maybe one ninety. I don't know. Like it's it's Degrom. He should be number one. I didn't put him in order. I just kind of researched like who who would be the who would be the best. Um, of course, of course, Garrett Cole's up there. Uh, the the Yankees and the Mets are playing on nine eleven now. In 2021, 2021. Now. Oh, in 21 now. Okay, I thought I read. I, okay, I figured. I didn't know if I read that wrong or not. Um, either way, I mean, I can't wait. I hope. I hope it's Cole and, and Degrom going again. I'm, I know they don't go against each other, but I uh, hope we get to see those two there. And then Matt Scherzer, who's probably the greatest free agent signing in baseball history. I mean, let's be real. Five years there, he's got them a World Series. Um, he had like a 2.74 ERA. One. Um, he had a hunt, 1,371 strikeouts and 1,050 innings. I mean, beast. That's the definition of a beast. So those are the top five pitchers going in. The schedule was released. Is there any games that stuck out to you in a 60-game season that uh, that are can't miss to you guys? No, at 60 games, no. they're, all, they're all you have no. to make. Yeah. They're, they're all- That's real. That's real. <laughs> that, okay, so I was sitting there like – I, I thought they would do a better job of playing some of these rivalry games. I didn't see many, like, I don't know how many great ri- baseball rivalries there are left, but, you know, I, I was surprised at, like, how, like, I thought they would try to put as many marquee matchups as possible, which led me to believe that a bad team possibly has a chance of winning the World Series, right? Well, you, so, yeah, I don't, th- I don't think you can, you can, I don't think if you, I think if you, no matter what your schedule is, how many games you, mm-hmm. if you win the World Series, you're not a bad team. You, you might not be a team that's built for distance over, you know, the short season. But I think if you end up winning the World Series, I wouldn't call you a bad team. And I also think, like a lot of, like we were all looking for these different matchups and different interleague play, but it all came down to travel. You know, that's the whole reason the schedule was a project is they didn't want all these teams traveling all over the place because they're not in a bubble. You know, they're they're going to, to you know, the different stadiums. So I think that was the concern. Wow. So I look at the mess schedule here, man, for the first time. And wow, they're like not getting many days off here. Right. Like they're not nobody is. Nobody is. No, 60 no. days, man. No, I know. I'm seeing like, whoa, like you start you start you start the season. And you don't have you don't have a day off until one, two, three, four, five series. You have five series in a row before you have a day off. Man, Ooh. they have three months off. They have you pay. Of time. No, I'm say, yeah, yeah. I'm every, not, I don't no, 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 no. Every day. Every then you should have day. accepted the offer. How about that? Player? You're playing you a game right. for, for two plus weeks. That's tough shit. Tough shit, players. You want to play hardball with the big boys? All right, this is what happens to you. All right, now play them damn game. <laughs> I'm over here talking. Okay, but either way, I'm looking like you're only, they're like literally now you only have, you know, I guess you have three games against the Yankees. I, I'm looking forward to Mets Yankees. That, that'd be interesting. I like Mets Boston uh, a lot too. But um, uh, I guess are they in Boston at all? I don't think they're in Boston. Yeah, they are in Boston. Yeah, they go, to back, Boston. they go to They're in Boston and then back home, right back to back and right in the beginning. So like that'd be real fun again. Like we went out there to Boston and see the Mets in Boston, and that was like so fun. But um, yeah. So in terms of the question about like a bad team winning, I I don't believe you can have that because you know the baseball has to be played. Like if you're winning the games, you freaking win the games. I like sure you it. can because they well, fix the schedule for a bad team to finish off great, and well, that bad no. team is called the New York Yankees. Shut up, well, they're Brothers not bad Moscow. at all, right? They're they're like, come on, but but if if 
if they're able, if they win the games and go on oh, and win, then they won. Like they, everybody plays the games, man. Like I, I'm, I like the shortened season, and we're gonna, we're definitely gonna see a team win that might not normally win just because, like we know that how the season normally is, It's long and it's drawn out. You have ups and downs and lows, and it's like now you have like damn near one stretch. It's like who's gonna be hot for this sixty games? Like whoever's hot is gonna be hot, and it's like this is half a season essentially. I'm cool with that. So you know, this it won't is, be a bad team. Is- this is going to this is going to prove or disprove my longstanding theory that baseball managers don't matter and they should be eliminated from the game of baseball. Now you actually have to manage your players, how much they play. The baseball manager don't know, Bert. You know it. The baseball manager does absolutely. You don't need them. They could sit in the press box and just call you on the like. You don't need them in the field. I think it's ridiculous that they wear a uniform. You look stupid. Like. <laughs> It's I, like, what do you do? What are you doing? Hey, go out they're there and coaches. tell the pitcher to. You need coach. Hey, you need a manager. Hey. You need somebody hey, to. Yeah. Throw. Yeah. Hey, you're pitching bad. Pitch better. Oh, no <laughs> shit, Dusty. You know, this, no, no, no. Look, they look at the scouting reports. They play the matchup a lot. You have your managers like the one in Philly right now who we know, uh, Joe Girardi, who brought us, you know, our 27th championship. He's one that loves the scouting reports, loves his binder. They loves to play the pitching matchups. You know, the days are gone where your manager's sitting there and really kind of calling and relaying signs. They all have their, their game plan together. But um, I'm all for a player manager. With that being said, I don't think, you know, I mean, like, Jerm, I'll, I'll play, you know, the happy medium here. You don't need someone sitting in the dugout, you know, give – give a captain the right, you know, that's out on the field to start calling everything or, or, you know, telling a pitcher when he's done and bringing in someone else. But what I'll say about the season is with 60 games, it's not that a bad team has a chance of winning, but I think you more so see the underdogs, the the teams that are maybe made up of these usual like walking wounded misfits of players that don't necessarily have a great longevity of staying healthy for a full baseball season. But now that it's shortened, have a higher chance because you're playing the odds and percentages at that, uh, that, you know, that individual is going to stay healthy. Um, so, so maybe we'll be surprised. you're saying the Mets have a chance. You're saying the Mets <laughs> have a chance. Right? Yo, but yeah, that's the thing. Everybody has a chance. Like if you, it's like a stretch. It's like if you're hot for this stretch, then you're hot for this stretch. Yeah. Like, the Mets ended mm-hmm. the season pretty well last season, you know, and, and if they come in with, they have talent, like, a lot of teams have talent, and it's like just you know how the how the ball the bat swings and how the ball rolls, man. Like it, it, you know, it shit can happen. I can't wait to I can't wait to see it. I'm I like I'm all for it because I wanted it to be short already. I already wanted the baseball season to be short, so to know that every game matters, I'm a, I feel like I'm gonna be more excited watching. I just feel that way. Real real quick, um, th- th- I'm happy that the season's shorter. It, it'll be a great experiment. To I mean, it may not help the pace of the game, but it'll add excitement to the games itself what number should the baseball season realistically be? What number would you like to see it be? Uh, I mean, I I would say, I don't know. Look, I'm, I may judge it based off what this season looks like. Um, I have a feeling for me mentally, this season just may be too short. That's only because we're used to so many games. Um, we all know baseball is way too long to begin with. So I, I don't know. Maybe like 100 games. I would, I would say – I was gonna say I would I would say keep it close with basketball. What's basketball? Eighty two. Yep. Eighty two. Yeah. I would say eighty two is you know between eighty two and ninety. It sounds like a sweet spot to me. I like that, Corey. I like that move. I, I like mm. that. I, as a baseball truist, I thought you would go want to go longer, but that's what I'm saying too. Like I said, I can't wait to see the sixty game season. That does sound like, especially when I'm looking at this, the, the the schedule again. It's too many games in too too short a time. I would obviously much rather it be more breaks between between series but yeah man a little bit more than 60 might be cool you know 80 yeah i'm gonna say i'm i'm, I'm a quarry on that like less than 100 definitely less than 100 basketball it's weird because basketball season feels too long you know yeah know, it hockey, does and, well. but it's no series there's only one game it's like one, yeah, season totally at time. one yeah you play and you play your and it's too many games game. i agree yeah. so i landed at 70 for for games i think 70 is a good enough number uh, maybe maybe 70 to 75, maybe 72. Like if it's 82, knock 10 games off. Because you think about it in the NBA, you know, that, that October to December, that two-month stretch, teams are playing, you know, 12, 13, 14 games. It doesn't really matter, right? Like the season doesn't really start until Christmas. So however many games that is, knock it off 82, you land at 70 somewhere in that range, right? 68, 70. So uh, I, think, I think that would be I – would be, I, w- I would be all for pushing, making the NBA start in October – preseason and the regular season starting on Christmas Day. Uh, I don't know if it's because other football is still being played and, and things like that. I, 
I think that would that messes, be that messes me up too. Like I, I don't watch basketball in the beginning of the season because football. Yeah, is still nobody on. does exactly. Nobody does, and that's why the games don't matter. Nobody watches them. Um, and I know we were just talking about baseball and teams that are bad uh, that that have may have a chance to win, but we know one team that won't be winning, uh, and that's the Angels because Mike Trout's on that team, and Mike Trout can only do uh, his status uh, pat his stat stats and just accumulate these monster numbers and not win anything because that's what he does, right? So Mike Trout jumped on the COVID train. Now, Mike Trout doesn't say anything ever. He's not interesting. He's not cool. He doesn't say anything ever. But he jumped on the COVID train, and his mom had to come in and say, if my son can go out there and wear a mask in batting practice, you should wear one too. What do you guys, <laughs> what do you guys have to say to Mike Trout's mom and Mike Trout trying to be the J.J. Watt of baseball? I mean, dude, she's got a point. Like, if, if he's wearing a mask and batting, then there's no reason why people can't wear it and go to Walmart. But, you know, I I also I, – I, I'm so torn. I get Mike Trout's got a baby on the way, so he's, you know, concerned about that and playing, and I get it. But at the same time, that's your job. You This is what you get paid for. So, you know, suck it up. You're still getting tested more than any average human being that goes to work. You know, anybody that goes to – that anybody that works at Walmart, they go in and out with the same risk, if not more, than Mike Trout does, and they don't have the availability to testing like Mike Trout does. So suck it up, Buttercup. You know it is what it is. You want to do your job and get paid. Do your job and get paid. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I honestly, I kind of miss what the hell even happened. Go ahead, Bert. <laughs> no, I, I I froze up, so I was like, whatever. Let me just go restart. But um. Dude, Mike Trout and his mother should just, dude, shut up. If you don't want to, like Corey said, if you don't want to play, don't play. Who cares? Stop. What bothers me most is, dude, he's one of the biggest names in baseball. Like, and I get, like, if you want, if you feel more comfortable in a mask, wear a mask. But if you're going to make a show of it, just stop. Either just play baseball and be done with it. And like Corey said, knowing the precaution Major League Baseball is taking and the teams are taking for you to feel safe, you know, if you, do, if you still are there and don't feel safe, get out. Bro, I mean, it, it is what it is. The shortened season, I'm sure everybody in L.A. is going to miss you, but nobody else will. Yeah, nobody else will because you'll be doing the same thing you're always doing, sitting at home, watching other teams win the World Series, okay? <laughs> Enough of you, Mike Trout. Like, what are you talking about you're not going to play? And now you're getting, you know, uh, Zach Wheeler jumping in from the Phillies. Like, you multimillionaires were crying for weeks about returning to baseball. And now that baseball is coming back, and just because it's not on your terms, now you're going to threaten to sit out? How about you just shut up, Mike Trout, and go out there and play baseball because you're a multimillionaire. You know what else can shut up? Tell your mom to shut up, okay? Because if she raised a better son, you'd be winning World Series for the Angels. <laughs> All right, how about you worry about being – how about you be worry about helping your team win instead of worrying about who's wearing a mask, who's not wearing a mask? Because guess what, Mike Trout? If you catch COVID, you're probably going to be okay, man. You don't have to worry about – losing your job forever. You don't have to worry about being laid off. You don't have to worry about finding out if your $600 unemployment check is going to be coming in the mail. So how about you just keep your mouth shut and go out there and play baseball, a game that you get paid to do, all right? And obviously you're not doing it that well if your team keeps losing. So how about you focus on being a better teammate? And and, and like you haven't, my problem with it is you've, you've gone out of your way to be the most boring superstar in sports, taking the title clear away from Tim Duncan. OK, <laughs> I like, like I, I, had, I really sat there and was like, oh, I'd much rather like Tim Duncan, at least is athletic. Like he can at least hit the, like an 18 footer off the glass. What can you do, Mike Trout? So go to top golf. Like that's the most interesting thing that you do. All right. Is, is, is go play a top golf. You don't get to speak for players when you've made a career out of not speaking for players. So how about you just keep your mouth shut? Let let Bryce Harper do that, because guess what happens? Bryce Harper, who's not as good as you are. But he at least was coming out there trying to help the players come out with a schedule, and all the players jumped on board with him. Nobody's running to Mike Trout's aid here. You know why? Because the players don't even – even the players know the truth. So, Mike Trout, uh, you and your mom just go out in L.A. and continue to not win World Series and keep your mouth shut. Um, that does it uh, for my list, guys. Uh, that was uh, – that's all I had. Do you guys have anything yeah. that we didn't touch on? I got – I got one more thing, um, mm -hmm. and it's a it's an early birthday wish to that man right there, Jamal. 
birthday is tomorrow, oh, right? No, yeah, tomorrow it Hell is. Hell yeah! So my boy's birthday is tomorrow, man. If you guys knew at home, if those watching the amount he puts into the creative ideas on this show, the topics on this show. He just needs a lot of love on his birthday tomorrow. So very happy birthday to you, sir. I appreciate everything you do, and I appreciate you as a human being. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank yeah, you so much. Sir. Happy birthday. I'm going to reach out to Mike Trout and see if he'll give you a birthday wish tomorrow. I'm hoping maybe I'll reach out on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, you know, what you, you know what you can do? Mike Trout, you know what you can do? You can win a World Series, so you can justify all the love you get nationally. <laughs> That's what you can do for me on my birthday. And you go play baseball. Um, Bert, I, I appreciate it, Corey. Guys, I do appreciate it. I'm happy not a big... birthday, bro. Thank you, man. Yeah, Ty knows I'm not a big, I'm not a big birthday guy. I don't really broadcast it. Like I'm gonna go to work tomorrow and, and work for twelve hours. And it's great. Know. It's actually. I mean, honestly, I you know it's such a birthday anyway. You know how you know whose real birthday it is. It's your yeah, daughter's. It's my daughter. It's your daughter. Yeah, daughter. Yeah, we, don't, we don't know. Yeah, I'm about to say. I think that's why I'm not excited anymore. Anybody who doesn't know, my daughter uh, and I share a birthday. So yeah. uh, when I turn twenty, I feel like I'm twenty five forever because when I would turn twenty five. My daughter was born. You had and, a birthday. You uh, had a birthday. You had a birthday in, in, uh, in, in long nine time, years man. now. Yeah, there nine years. Go. It'll be nine years tomorrow. I haven't had a birthday. So in my oh, mind, yeah. that makes me immortal. I'm immortal. So I'll live forever. Um, everybody, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for all the social media commentary, people sharing. I, I seen I was dipping in and out of, of social while we were talking. Um, please go to the www.giveusashot.network. We have other podcasts. Um, if, you know, it's a menu of items. If there's there's a bunch of good stuff over there, go go to the shop. We got the Bubba shirts. Uh, we have the Smart Out Club shirts. Ty's wearing one right now. That fuck um, Terry five dollars. Listen, yeah. that five dollars off. You get you can get these shirts for twenty dollars with the coupon yeah. code Shop Boys. The Shop, shop boys, boys in the building. Coupon That's code it. Shop Boys with a Z, of course, because Z. we're ballers. With a yes. shop Shop Boys, five dollars off your t-shirts. Thank you very much. And uh, come join us at the Give Us a Shot Network Facebook page for happy hour, uh, 5.30 every Friday. Uh, if you want to join, uh, just send a message to the Give Us a Shot Network Facebook page, and we will make sure you get the Zoom link. We cannot make it public anymore because we're hot shit, and people like to hack us now. So um, come join us for happy hour. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but it'll be fun because it's always fun. Our last happy hour turned it into a two-and-a-half-hour uh, laugh, laugh fest. So, um, uh, Corey, Ty, Bert, thank you very much for joining me tonight. Everybody have a, have a pleasant and safe night. Yep. Sir. Sports. Sports.